Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. Today we're going to be talking about Sumerian tomb worms and how we can use them to help prepare a... What the hell? What's going on? Appears to be a message from Orville Dedenbacher. It says that his ghost will visit the lair as soon as we've decorated for Halloween. I just got the same message in the crystal ball. Fascinating. What now? Amor. Bones of Necronus. Is that your ex girlfriend? Absolutely not. It's probably just the carrier bat. He used to deliver the viewer mail here. He probably just has a letter for us. <laughs> and there it is. Just like I said. Hey, use the door. Don't go through the. It's a letter from your own fabric and craft stores. Can I see? Sure. This is exciting. <laughs> Dear Voltaire, we at Joanne are big fans of Gothic homemaking and we'd love to help you decorate for Halloween. What timing. Yes. Here is a gift card that's good at all of our stores. We look forward to seeing what you create. That's amazing. It is amazing. And you know what's even more amazing? What? If we do a really good job, we may just get visited by the ghost of our old pal, Mr. Orville Dedenbaum. Out be Lucci. Want to see Orville again? Yes. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we better go shopping. Let's go. Let's do it. We went to a Joanne store in Phoenix, Arizona, where I immediately spotted these artificial pumpkins. Nothing says Halloween like pumpkins, so I knew I was going to need a few of these. And I nearly flipped my gourd for this one. Into the cart they went, and so it began. Further in the store, I saw some smaller pumpkins, and apparently the pumpkins saw me. I, I love him. <laughs> there were bats, and there was no shortage of skulls. It was full on Halloween in that store, and they had some really great ideas that'll really make us scream. This year they had this enormous skeleton, which is in my opinion, worthy of the extremely enormous price. And he seemed like he was saying, Look alive, my minions. Look alive and prepare for Halloween. Yes, master. There were various metal bat decorations, but my favorite was this one. As someone who was raised by bats, I know a good one when I see one. And it lit up. It gave me butterflies in my stomach, as did this one. I think they'll look great in the lair. And I definitely couldn't knock this amazing door knocker. My head was spinning for these amazing pinwheel lawn stakes, but unfortunately, as we don't have a lawn at the lair, they might as well just go any which way the wind blows. Now these skeletal lawn stakes are sure to come in handy, so I grabbed a few of those. And then there was the skeletal thing. And no bones about it, it's coming home with us. I bought this wooden coffin on the left for a DIY project I have in mind, but I'm gonna do that at a later date. For now, I'll be needing this tombstone sign in a grave way for our current project. And can I just reflect on how great this mirror is? This coffin-shaped shelving unit is another item I saw that I was really impressed with. I'd seen it online, and I wasn't sure I'd ever see one in a store. It had some really great details like the metal frame and the laser-etched spider, and I would have absolutely purchased it, except that I have already too many coffin-shaped shelves at home, especially now that I'm making some of my own, but I'd be willing to bet that this was one of the most sought-after items this year at Cho An. I opted instead for this haunted house, I want to live in this thing. Unfortunately, I wouldn't fit, so it will just have to live at the lair instead. Next, I spotted these glass pumpkins, and I can only give them a glowing review. That much should be crystal clear. I couldn't say boo to this handsome black skull, so into the cart it went. Now, anytime you're hosting, you'll want to serve some treats, and I find these spiderweb cake stands very useful to that end. So they're coming home to my web. 
And I must tell you that I went to several Joann stores in search of these adorable spider plates. I love them. And of course, since we're hosting a ghost, I thought it'd be nice to pick up this little fellow to make Orville feel at home. Next, I spotted these storage boxes. And while I think they're really great for storing your spooky things, I think they're gonna give us some additional surface to work on. Plus, this one has a skull that practically looks like Orville. I also picked up this little one to help me cover up a wax stain on the wall, as you'll see. This storage box has a title that will certainly be true if old Orville shows up, and I think he'd appreciate the black and gray stripes within. This one's a keeper. And that's when I fell into the artificial flower department. I immediately spotted this orange garland, and I have a crazy notion for what to do with this. I also picked up this black garland with glittery bats. But when I saw these black florals, I just knew I was gonna be making a Halloween bouquet. This location had a very large artificial floral department with lots of options in lots of fall colors. So I just started constructing a bouquet right there on their table. I grabbed some of these, and I certainly wasn't going to leave these behind. I went kind of nuts, but did I go over budget? Oh, I went very, very over budget, but it was worth it. In the end, I came up with what I think is a really pretty Halloween bouquet. I hope you agree. I also picked up some smaller pieces for some smaller bouquets. And for good measure, I picked up this little bat bouquet because why not? Honestly, I think people would be really surprised by just how into the floral I get. <laughs> I really get wrapped up in it. As the name implies, there's no better place to find Halloween fabrics than at Joann Fabric and Craft Stores, and they certainly had a really large variety this year. I saw designs old and new in just about every interpretation of Halloween, from the truly macabre to the really cute. I had gotten it into my head I wanted to use a spiderweb pattern to make curtains and a tablecloth, and I wanted it to be orange, but with a simple web design. So I set out to find something like that. It was at that point that Mayumi had an idea that we could combine fabrics. We could buy a lacy gossamer fabric and lay it over another fabric to create more texture and interest. What a great idea. And I realized I could use that technique to make my orange spiderweb fabric for this project. We are back from shopping at Joanne, and we are ready to start decorating Orville's corner of the lair for Halloween. And the first thing we're gonna start out with is fabric to create a little tablecloth for our nightstand. Mayumi cut the orange fabric to size, and I laid it down on our nightstand. We ended up finding this amazing spiderweb fabric at Joanne. We cut it to size and laid it over the orange fabric, and suddenly, that image I had in my head was right there before me. Now that we knew we were onto something, Mayumi cut the orange fabric for the curtains. Then she cut the spiderweb fabric. And because her sewing machine is in Mexico City and we're in New York City at the lair, she then sewed our spiderweb curtains by hand. Incredible. These came out so beautifully. I absolutely love them. Thank you, my love. Darling, you are the best. <laughs> Anything for gothic homemaking. All right, let's put these up. Yes. I put up the curtains and they looked really great. There's nothing more satisfying than when you have an idea in your head and you can make it a reality with materials from the arts and crafts store. And now it's time for that black garland we found. I hung those on the wall to add a bit of texture and creepiness to the existing vinyl decal design I have at the lair. Next, I created a lovely little Halloween bouquet using the artificial floral that I bought. I am, of course, going to need a vase for the a vase, a vase, a vase. Which is it, vase or vase? I don't know, my love. I don't know how to say it in English. Oh, how do you say it in Spanish? Florero. I am going to need a florero for this bouquet, and I think I have just the thing. I decided to use the vase I made for an episode called How to Make a Gothic Bouquet. 
I just removed the old gothic bouquet and slipped in my new Halloween bouquet. That seems to work quite nicely. This bouquet will add some color to this otherwise dark corner. Next, I simply inserted some of the other smaller pieces into wine bottles I'd painted black to create smaller bouquets. And now would probably be the perfect time for that adorable little bat bouquet. Ta-da! So I guess you would say this is already in a florero? It's a florerito. Florerito? Yes. Why, because it's little? Yes. <laughs> fly, my pretties, fly! That will just go right here. And next we bring in the pumpkins. I threw some black velvet over some boxes to create a shelf. And that's where these gourds will go. It's important, I think, to have vertical layers as well as horizontal ones when decorating. Otherwise, your display might look kind of flat. And now it's time to bring in the boxes. Obviously, this can be used to store things, but for now, I'm going to use them as another surface to decorate on. And I'm just going to slide this harbinger of Orville's arrival back here where we can see the title. That's starting to take shape, I think. And here's that little box that's gonna help me hide a black stain on the wall. And just to make sure no one tries to move it, I'll place this armed guard inside. And now it's time for our sculptural pieces like this handsome skull. I have these beautiful sconces and I think they're the perfect place for our glass pumpkin and our haunted house. And it wouldn't be the lair without some bats, so I hung these on the wall. And I hung this one over the throne. I think they look really great together. It's always polite to put out treats for the recently deceased, so let's get out those spiderweb stands. And our beautiful spiderweb plates. And of course our little ghosty. I think I'll keep him strictly decorative. These plates, though, are going to get some creepy cupcakes we scared up for the occasion. And some generic orange candles will give everything a nice warm glow. Now, that's starting to look like a hauntingly inviting little corner. But the throne is the most important part. If you want to attract a ghost, you have to create a place that is comfortable and alluring for that ghost to want to sit. <laughs> so I think this would probably be a good time to use that orange garland. Yes. Let's get that up. I had an idea to wrap the orange garland around the sides of the throne. It really gives it a lovely autumnal feel. And luckily it was quite easy to do just weaving it through the existing holes in the woodwork. That's looking great. Now that throne says autumn to me, but it's not really gonna say Halloween until we specifically add something spooky. And that is where these skeletal lawn stakes come in. Can you give me a hand? Sure. A hand, really? Are you doing visual puns now? <laughs> I'm the dad, I do the puns. <laughs> the bones of the Cronus. Just like the garland, I simply inserted the skeletal arms into the existing holes in the woodwork of the throne and posed them. The result is this wonderfully ghoulish design that looks almost like a giant insect is ready to embrace poor Orville. And just to make sure he feels truly welcomed, I made him a sign using this wooden tombstone. I simply painted it black, sketched a message in pencil, and then wrote it in white paint marker. I hung it up on the wall, and we're ready. What do you think? Will Orville find this inviting enough to come and pay us a visit? Would you want to spend your Halloween night here? Let us know in the comments below.
there you have it. What do you think? It's amazing. I love it. I love it too. I think it came out really great. Yes. The question is, will Orville love it enough to travel across the spirit world and visit us here in the lair tonight? Now it is a full moon out there and I'm fairly certain he's not going to show up before midnight. So now there's nothing left to do but wait. Ay, nanita. Ay, right. Yeah. Ay, nanita. Ay, nanita. Yes. Ay, Ay nanita. nanita. <laughs> <laughs>